Hi class 6, welcome to DPSJ. Today is 27th April. I have already finished chapter 1 and today I am going to start a new chapter that is chapter number 2. All, all of you I think have the textbooks with you. So please open page number 17. Open page number 1717 and today I am going to teach you the Egyptian civilization. I am going to teach you the Egyptian civilization. Okay. So let us first see about the location and origin means where the Egyptian civilization was located. Okay. So all of you please look at your book. Ancient Egypt, like other early civilizations, developed in a river valley. In the previous chapter also I said that all the other civilizations that uh, you have learned also in previous classes, civilizations they develop beside the river valley. Okay, So this uh, civilization that is, that is the Egyptian civilization also developed in the river valley. The valley of the river Nile. In Egypt, this civilization developed in the, uh, beside the river Nile. So, the river Nile was central to the whole civilization. Means, the whole civilization depended on this river. And it was a constant and major influence on its development. Now, you know that a Greek historian whose name is, I have written here on the board, ancient Greek historian, whose name is Herodotus, okay, he told that Egypt, he gave another name for Egypt, that Egypt is called the gift of the Nile, okay, that Egypt is called gift of the Nile, that means if Nile river was not present, then Egypt would not be there in that position, so it is because of this Nile River only that Egypt developed uh, into a, uh, Egypt has developed a good civilization there. Every year without fail the river would overflow its bank. So every year there was flood or overflowing of the bank and the water level it came up. Okay. And the entire valley went under the water. Okay. And it looked like a vast lake. So when this water receded, so after slowly, slowly the water level came down, but whatever the rivers were carrying with them, the nutrients, the minerals, the silt, pebbles, that actually were deposited on the land. And that is the reason the land uh, beside the river became very fertile. So, the waters receded and they left behind a deposit of black fertile soil along each bank. So, along each bank there was a black soil. And crops grew easily in this soil and yielded rich harvest. The Nile provided water for irrigation. So, this river was the main river for the Egyptian as they drew the water for their irrigation purpose. The Egyptians, they built many networks of canals, dams, dikes and reservoirs to carry on the agricultures on a large scale. So, they mainly depended on agriculture and for making their agriculture uh, develop, more and more develop. So, that is why they uh, constructed many canals, dams and dikes. The Nile also served as national highway and the main transportation channel. So, more than the roadways, uh, it was easier for them to travel or transport things by the help of this Nile River. So, that is why they told that it is used or it is uh, more or less it is served as a national highway. Okay, This enabled the Egyptians to develop trade relations with neighboring countries making their country a land of plenty. So, you know that to develop uh, the development of any nation or the development of any place uh, actually needs the connection with the outer world. So, because of this good connection of this Nile River, uh, what happened? They could uh, do the trade and commerce with the other foreign countries. And that is why uh, they became 
uh, more and more rich okay the valley of the nile was a narrow strip of fertile land it was a the valley of this nile river was a narrow strip of fertile land it was stretching along the banks of the nile it was about 1200 km long the rest of the country was a desert of sand and stone so only where the nile river was flowing only that part or the beside uh, the river the bank which was there that was fertile but the rest of the land uh, was uh, it was a desert and it was filled with sand and stones so these deserts which served as a natural barrier okay to the foreign inventions barrier means uh, the partition or separation uh, these deserts act as a separation means means the uh, foreigners or the foreign invaders if they wanted to get inside uh, this egyptian civilization they could not enter because of this vast desert present so the early egyptian settlers so that is why uh, early egyptian settlers they lived peacefully okay and secure during which they learned to build huts grow crops domesticate animals and establish a society of their own that is why for a long time uh, they were not disturbed by any others and they lived ever happily uh, by building their own herds. They domesticated many animals. The ancient Egyptians, they strongly believed that there was life after death. And you know that is why uh, they, they wanted to uh, make their tomb more decorated and they believed that a dead person lived on in. Turn to page number 18 dead person lived on in his tomb which was his eternal tomb the more beautiful it was the more splendid will be the afterlife so they believed or they had a notion that uh, if the tomb is decorated more properly then uh, the person who will be uh, born after the death they will also have a better life so this belief inspired the ancient egyptians to build giant pyramids i think you have you have uh, seen pyramids okay or you have seen the picture of pyramids anywhere so uh, because of their belief they started building the tombs in the shape of pyramids okay and they also built many magnificent temples monuments and tombs this was the manner in which one of the earliest and most enduring civilizations in history was born which flourished for more than 2000 years Archaeological excavations, inscriptions and official documents have helped historians to reconstruct the history of the ancient Egypt. The history of ancient Egypt is divided into three periods. Now, the history of this Egyptian civilization, it was divided into three periods. One is Old Kingdom, Middle King, second is Middle Kingdom and the third one is the New Kingdom. Old Kingdom, the approximately it was 3000 to 2000 BC. The Middle Kingdom, it was approximately 2000 to 1700 BC and the New Kingdom is approximately 1600 to 1100 BC. Now for about 100 years, 1700 to 1600 BC, Egypt was invented and ruled by the Hyksos tribes. So for more than, for about 100 years. So this Egypt was invaded and it was ruled by what tribe? It was ruled by Hyksos tribes. Now, from the earliest times, Egypt was divided into two parts, Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt. Around 3200 BC, these were united and ruled by Pharaohs. Okay, Three, around 3200 BC, it was ruled by Pharaohs. Pharaohs means the rulers of Egypt are called Pharaohs. Rulers to become a brilliant civilization that lasted until the death of Cleopatra. The last pharaoh in 230 BC. Now I am going to discuss little bit about the characteristics of the Egyptian civilization. Now about the town planning. The use of the urban planning in ancient Egypt a matter of con continuous debate. Now some Egyptian cities were planned while some like Memphis and Thebes grew or organically. Cities were planned based on proximity to a water source and the height of the location above the flooding of the Nile. So how the town was planned? First it was uh, calculated or it was planned out that according to the river source. Where was the river? According to the river source, uh, the town was planned. And also the level of the flood was important for the construction. Cities were divided into here 
upper and the lower lower region upper means southern and lower means northern regions now there were few broad parallel streets so parallelly there i have shown on the board here look here so one this is a broad road okay there is, this is a broad road and this is the narrow streets which are crossing this broad roads at right angles okay so it is given here okay there are few broad parallel streets running north to south cut at right angles narrow streets dividing the city into blocks or grids okay the city was divided into blocks or grids now over the years even the planned cities were reduced to a erratic jumble of houses now planned cities though the the, the cities were planned then also there was jumble of houses alleys and courtyards as rebuilding the houses through the centuries changed the original grid pattern of the cities okay so there were so many houses alleys and courtyards that it was a clumsy area and uh, in my next okay today i am going to teach up to here and my next class i am going to continue with the buildings okay thank you students